Thought it was you. Nice to see you, Dixon. It's been a while, Grandpa. One year, if my memory hasn't left me. Good to see you haven't kicked the bucket. <laughs> Put a sock in it. Wait. Dixon. Dunban. You're the heroes who risked your lives a year ago in the battle to defend the colonies. What's a pretty young lady like you doing hanging around with this bunch of slackers? Dunban, Dixon. Thanks for helping out back there. I don't believe we did anything. He's right. Savior, thanks for that giant bird. What was that thing? A telepia. A mystical beast that protects the sleeping Bionis. Though I've never heard of one ever venturing down to where us Homs live. Strange. A telepia? So that's what it's called. A mystical beast that protects the Bionis. So, what's your plan from here? Follow that metal-faced machine, I presume? What else? He's gonna pay for what he did to Fiora. Well then, there's only one place he'd go. Galahad Fortress in Sword Valley. A year ago, those things were building a huge fortress, right in the valley. Tactically, it's an excellent location to launch attacks from. I feel there's a strong chance they've now finished building it. That would explain why both colonies were attacked recently. Sword Valley, the very place where we made our last stand one year ago. So it's settled. Bash down a fortress and smash some metal brains. Easy, Ryan. Shulk? There's somewhere else I need to go first. But what could be more important than... Wait, you saw another one. Saw what? What are you on about? These visions sound pretty handy. Well, out with it. What do you see? I was somewhere very high up. I was fighting at the peak of a huge tower, fighting Metal Face. I heard a voice, and then the Monado's power was unleashed. His armor instantly gave way. The Monado doesn't work on Metal Face at the moment. But if that vision comes true... A tower, huh? Doesn't give us much to go on. Can you remember anything else from your vision? I remember... a huge horn. That's it. As I fought Metal Face, I could see the Bionis head. Prison Island. Prison Island? I've never been. But I've heard of a black tower at the head of the Bionis. They say it was built by the ancient High Entia race. The High Entia are real? I thought they were a myth. I wouldn't blame you, son. An ancient race living at the top of the Bionis? It does sound crazy. But Bionis is home to all kinds of different people, not just us. That includes the High Entia. The High Entia, huh? I dismiss them as folklore as well. Never assume anything. Seeing is believing, right? Have you ever met one? Well, yeah. Wow. Dixon, man, you're just full of surprises. What can I say? I'm well-traveled. <laughs> and it's all for your future. Day and night I search for new lands, met new cultures, and gain knowledge for our people. The life of a wandering old fool. A lonely one at that. <laughs> Stop your whining. You do it because you enjoy it. And you make a tidy profit. Who asked you, Dunban? Well then, Shulk, what's it to be? We'll head there. There are alternatives. We could abandon the colonies, find a place the Mekon will not discover and live in secret. I realized something when we were fighting Zort. Wherever we go, they'll follow. We can't run from these things. We must fight on. I see. Then I am obliged to join you. You want to come with us? Scared I'll get hurt? No way! We know you're stronger than anything. Right, Ryan? You bet! I've recovered a great deal since we last met. And that miserly old coot over there made me this. Sharp, light, perfect for cutting through steel. Show me a mech on and I'll slice it in two.
I might not be in peak condition, but I'm useful. I can't thank you enough. We're in it together now. You can count on us, Dunban. Miserly old coot. That sword is forged from mech on armor. It's worth every penny. So you keep saying. If you want to go to the Bionis head, you'll need a guide to get to the upper regions. We're at the bottom, so I guess the only way to go is up. Right. But we'll need to go up the lower back first. The lower back? Colony 6 is right at the top of the Bionis leg. So we'll have to head around the waist. Through a place called Sartal Marsh. Follow me. And now begins our new objective. Climbing up the Bionis. What's up everybody and welcome back to my let's play of Xenoblade Chronicles. In the last episode, we completed up the Ether Mine, which is now devastated behind us, and of course, still smoking, and ooh, there's some orbs back here. Not that we need these, and yes, by the way, this is now the point I mentioned in the past couple of episodes. We can no longer enter the main area of the Ether Mine. If I go into my map, I go to Ether Mine, I can look all the way around, and from the observation point all the way through the central pit is unavailable. As you can see, we cannot enter this area, and so you cannot skip to this landmark. The area is destroyed. We can no longer enter the central pit. So if you missed out on anything while inside, all I can tell you is really too bad. And uh, it's going to be just about time here to head on up towards Magna Forest. And I do want to mention, actually, really quickly, um, I was going to put an image on the screen, but very quickly, since we have a warp point here, I want to warp back to the Bionis leg real quick. And we'll just go to the Jabba's Rock Rest Area. Uh, just for a moment, because I do want to show something off. So, remember back... Well, actually back when we first got to this area that I said, if you can see an area, you can go to it. And, you know, it's raining. Um, let's maybe change the time if we can. Get the rain to go away. Yeah, there we go. No. It wasn't so cloudy it might be a little bit easier to see I don't really want this music in the way either though um, actually I know where we need to go <laughs> I've warped to the wrong area we probably need to go more up towards like um, probably somewhere up around maybe Zach's guidepost might be a little bit better of a spot to go to yeah if we look up towards the Bionis like Leg, yeah, so like if you look right above Shulk's head right here, that area right up there, all that stuff wrapped around the Bionis, yeah, that's where we're headed. So when I said you can see it, you can go to it, I, I really meant it. I'm um, not going to lie. I mean, when I said you could go there, I wasn't joking. By the way, if you want to know where we are, we're at the Freight Road of Landmark, which will pop would have popped up on your screen at the end of the cutscene we just watched, and it's part of the Colony 6 area. We can't quite get into like colony six official just yet though we've basically just come out on the other side and i'm gonna warp back here we're gonna change the time tonight for one very important reason you'll see here in just a moment uh, you'll see why um once we kind of make our way i guess into um the next area but uh yeah so colony six is yeah actually just right above us right there um, but also, before we head into the next area, uh, we got our little time attack orb thing here, and uh, we haven't seen one of these for quite a while. I mean, we, well, we've seen them around, we just haven't really paid much attention to them. But, um, now seems like a good time. There are nine of these types of challenges, um, and I explained this a little bit. There are, well, you guys you obviously remember NC, obviously the Nopon Arc Sage is still a thing. And if we attempt trials, uh, all these different trials and things like that, we have free and restricted. I'll be taking care of both. I'm going to show you guys uh, the restricted versions. Uh, I'll be showing those on camera, and then I'll be doing the free ones just because it's the same battle, except I can use whatever characters I want, um, obviously, to do the challenges. So I'll be doing that as well. Um, but obviously, uh, these are all tied to the main story. Uh, there are 10 of them total, and one of them right here is actually tied to the post-game 
uh, DLC story uh, of Future Connected. So I won't be doing that one, at least to start off with. Obviously, like I said, Future Connected will be part of this LP, and I will be coming back and doing this after we complete the main story. But it'll be, of course, a very, very long time uh, until we get there. So instead, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to try and, like, once the next, like, so we have three here. Granted, we're not quite level 30, but we can still take these on just fine uh, as long as we completed the Ether Mine. Uh, and so what I'm going to have to do is we'll be visiting this area three times throughout our adventure. Uh, this time, which I'll be doing the first three restricted battles. Um, they all happen to be uh, the difficulties rated by, like, peppers, and there's four of them. Uh, the first three, I'll have one. Uh, the next three, I actually have two. Uh, the next, if we skip over this one, and the next three have uh, two of them. Uh, these two, I'm sorry, this one and this one have three peppers, and the final one has four. No, wait, these three, wait, yeah, this one and this one have three, this one has four. There we go. And so each time those pop up, and these are spaced out way far enough that they're not really going to get in the way or anything. Uh, and I'm going to quit explaining this and just hop straight into things. Humble beginnings. Begin this battle. Uh, we'll get these items, by the way, um, if we get these things. Um, and I don't really need to move anything around. And we have to play as Ryan. We don't have a choice, by the way. So this one will have to play as Charlotte. This one is Dunban. Uh, this actually gave me a chance to show off Dunban because I actually, uh, well, I mean, we kind of did. And then, of course, before we head into uh, the next area, Satoral Marsh, uh, I'll show them off in a little bit more detail. But quickly, I want to take on all three of these. And I love how the Nuffon talks to us as we enter the battle. Uh, nothing too much about these, but we're going to take on three at a time each time we visit one of these. So this one, episode 21, the next one probably won't be for a very, very long time. Uh, if we press plus during a time attack, we have the option to give up. I obviously won't be doing that. But the time attack, we got to beat these enemies as quickly as possible. So let's do it. Increase the aggro. Shulk, what are we doing here? Obviously, we want to inflict topple here. And I'm pretty sure the Arc Sage, like, comments to us as we're fighting. Hammer B is just super strong. Sword Drive. I'm sorry, no, it's Sword Drive that's super strong. Locks onto the target. And ooh. Aura Burst. And freaks, inflicts Strength Down, which is pretty good. Nothing crazy. Finally, we can do a topple as well. Uh, Grant Spike. Pretty good for us. And there we go. That was wave one. And now wave two is right here. A bunch of our moves. All right. So they'll all attack once uh, we... This. Ooh, like topple. While we can get in here, let's do War Swing and do Area of Effect. Alright. Battle Commands. Let's focus our efforts. And a Chain Attack. Sweet. Um, sword Drive. Wow, that does a lot. Holy cow. Well, only two attacks because we don't have three party members, so no uh, continuation of anything. Right, I need to focus on this one here. All right, increase our aggro just a little bit. Uh, I don't want to use. Come on, why is my auto attack not going off? Is what I want to know. Spike, topple. There we go. Strength down. Should be fine. And there we go. Now finally one more wave. There we go. We got that going for us. War Swing's going to be really good here. Um, topple. There we go. And another chain attack already. Wow. Um, that was pretty fast. Sword Drive. Did almost nothing. And, oh, we actually did get one. And I screwed it up. Sweet. And we have no way to inflict topple. Sweet. So I got a break art, but no way to inflict anything. 
Or hopefully we don't spend too long on this. Hopefully we get an S rank. If we don't ever end up getting an S rank on any of these, which is what we need in order to get the items that we want, um, what will end up happening is I'll just go back afterwards and uh, come back probably after the video is over and go get those items. Well, no. Well, at least in this episode, I'll do it immediately afterwards so you guys can see how the rewards works. And there we go. Sweet. Um, but yeah, so like for this example, if we don't happen to get an S rank, which I think we should, I would hope. Rankings of rewards. Your overall rank is determined based on your clear time plus bonuses earned. Special one-time rewards will be awarded for the first time. Your overall rank meets the minimum rank needed for that reward. The higher your rank is, the more Nopon stone you'll earn. All right. Clear time is A and... Mm. Yeah, so... Yeah, not great. We only got A rank. So we didn't get any of the special uh, rewards wait apparently never mind i was wrong about that we actually did get everything um oh i think for our oh yeah for the restricted ones we need a or better so yeah we completed the first one and so uh for all of these i'm just gonna start like going in and just like uh, doing these like back to back to back to back as quickly as possible i don't want to spend up too much time uh uh, so any episodes that we take this on will be usually a little bit longer already because they just have to be. And they'll take place in different areas. Um, and also, you see we have a uh, thing around us. And Oh, wait. We're playing as Sharla. Um, the last thing I want is the aggro for Sharla. Alright. We'll tranquilize, I guess. Metal Blast. Alright, I need to heal Ryan. Oh gosh. Ryan is taking a lot of damage here. And oh my. I got too hot and I forgot that Charla's uh, not too great here. I love how their gear changes. Look at Charla, Ryan, and Shulk. Look at how their gear changes depending on what we're, what we're doing here. Uh, because it's a set way, uh, we have certain equipment, and uh, it doesn't have any sort of cosmetic over it, so uh, we're just stuck with what we have. All right, we'll do this. Trying to draw any aggro if possible. Uh oh, this is not good. Why am I drawing so much aggro? There we go. I got bind. Uh, flying enemies. It's gonna be a lot better. Ooh, I see Shulk only has certain arts here. Um, yeah, backslash, I guess. Uh, sword drive. Maybe I could have gone about that a little bit better. But, uh, you know, it's kind of whatever. Alright, why am I getting hit? I'm not sure. Alright, resisted break. That's probably not great. Heal. There we go. And we completely reheal between battles. There we go. But our arts do not get restored between fights. So that's the one problem that we kind of have with this. We have a chain attack, though. Uh, we start with Sharla. So it might be better to do something like Inflict Break. Least power of the Monado, shield, and buster. Let's go for a buster. And then topple, wild down. Alright, so we got a topple on one enemy. Granted, it was just a bang. And just like that, that guy's already dead. Um, I do not need to be drawing this much aggro. Stores HP to everyone, and then we'll do a cool off. Uh, I think with this one, we're actually probably doing better than the other one, just because we have three party members. So we're doing a lot more damage a lot quicker. I'm going to say quickerly. That's not even a word, but... Sleep. Alright, chain attack. This should hopefully help us finish this off. Dream edge. And wild down. Alright, so we'll inflict a break here on the metal blast, and there we go. Uh, now granted, I need to do a heal bullet or some kind of healing like immediately on 
uh, Ryan, uh, and then now we have to do a cooldown. We're pulling a lot of aggro here, but they're going to take him out right here. And there we go. Only three and a half minutes. Not bad. Granted, we're already like 15 minutes into this video because I spent a lot of the beginning talking about what we're going to do with this area. Which, granted, I shouldn't have, but oh well. It's a little late for that now. And there we go. The rank of A. It's all we needed. And I got a lot of Nop on Stone. And there we go. So we're getting a lot of gear for this, which is uh, really neat. It's actually really good gear. Now, granted, as we go through this and uh, we complete certain areas and do certain things, I originally thought I was going to do this as like a one-time, like as they unlocked type deal kind of thing. Um, and you know what? Actually, I may still go back and do that. I haven't decided yet. We're still quite a ways away until the next one unlocks anyway. And so I don't have to worry too much about it at the current moment. Like, it'll be okay if I just, like... And, uh, let's do this. Let's see... Some of them put to sleep. Oh, it's the 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 enemy itself has been put to sleep. Sorry. Well, I love how we have Mech on here. Um, only Dunban can do damage to this guy. As we inflict a break and topple. I know I've been toppled. Sweet. Um, and I may still do that because the uh, if we do it the way that I originally noted at the beginning of this video, which no, I realize may not be the best idea. Um, what we'll end up wanting to do, uh, and this makes more sense now that I say it out loud, is because the gear that we'll get for each of these is only going to, you know, really work if you do something like, oh, I realize Sharla is going to get cool down so she can't be a part of the chain attack. Anyway, as I try to explain this while fighting, it's very difficult and we have to continue to run through the cave to find the other enemies here um, because this game is so nice to me I love it I right, do that steel strike topple look how we got the cravel somehow but now that I can finally kind of focus we're just attacking this cravel so it's not too difficult we're gonna inflict bleed. Never mind. Sword drive. I forget we only do one damage. It really does nothing. I don't know why I forgot that. I'm an idiot. Anyway. Um, because the gear that we would get from the other ones after, like, maybe far after their original use is kind of gone. It basically... There wouldn't be much use for us at that point. So, honestly, you know what? Scratch everything I said at the beginning of the video. As these things unlock, and I'll make note of them uh, when they unlock. And I'll make sure to go do them at least some point in one of those episodes. More than likely, it'll be just a side quest episode. Because you can kind of think of this as like a side quest of sorts. Oh, we have Blossom Dance. So, as long as we press B at the right moment, we can deliver a combo attack with... Dunban, which I wanted to show off because we haven't really got to show off Dunban. Now, granted, this is not all of his arts because, you know, it's not all of his arts. And also, I can finally topple this thing. And, oh, hello. Days. There we go. Ooh, sweet. I'm going to flick to break again as well. Finally, wave three. And it looks to be just a couple, one mech on and a couple other things here. Break and topple. Uh, one thing about cool, is done about cool about Dunban is that he can uh, topple enemies without uh, the help of anyone else. He can do it all by himself, which is pretty cool, if you ask me. What was the strength of all these guys? Moves debuffs, grants haste. I'll take it. 
All right, here. This. And topple. Uh, one of the I love using Dumbman. Dumbman is so much fun to use. Uh, it, not necessarily with all the aggro or anything. Just... All right, chain attacks. We should take care of all of these enemies fairly quickly. They're not very strong. And also, I love how we are actually stronger uh, than normal. Just because this requires us to be level 30. Not that you I should not to say that um, by the way, this is not to say that you should be level 30 at this point in the game. Um, these are just generally worked in levels of five, so um, I, I guess I shouldn't mention that out loud. Like the game doesn't expect you to necessarily be level 30 by this point, though you certainly could. Um, most people are around my level, which is like 27, which is only slightly lower than normal. Alright. Um, and I'll be going off camera to do the other fights uh, later. Um, well, actually, right after this, granted. So, it won't be long after this, but I'll show each of the rewards for all of those for getting an S rank uh, as we do it. So, we got success with this one. This one was five minutes long. It was a little bit longer, but we should still be fine just because it was a little bit more waves and uh, things like that. Hopefully, we get an A rank. I would hate to get a rank of B. Oh. Oh no, we did not do very good. Um, well, I'm gonna go back and do that fight again then, I guess. Um, see you guys back here in a moment. All right, I was a little bit faster that time. Ooh, and there we go. And we got more Lapon stone for that. And we got all the festive gear, sweet. And that was everything, at least in terms of the restricted battles. Um, yeah, pretty sweet. Now, let's see if there's any trades that we can make. I uh, know we actually already have all this, but we can get more if we want, obviously, with not, uh, with the um, the stones that we have. Um, but uh, strength, any gems uh, that we want. Um, this looks very enticing. If only I could afford it. Um, I'll have to go through and look at all these later, probably. Ooh, Aura Heal. Nah, probably not. Arts Heal's pretty good for Ryan. Um, all of these, there's a lot of really good, uh, things here that we could try to buy here. None of it's, we can only buy one gem more than likely just because everything's so expensive. Anyway. Um, what I do want to do real quick is I want to go into equipment and now check out why we can't use these. Hmm. Oh, apparently only Ryan can. Oh, I see. Each of these can only be used on a certain character. Uh, okay. Also, I forgot the... Uh, just uh, Dunban's appearance. If the ignore his beach attire for a moment, um, he can also have different colors here, or he can have his original like armor on that he wore way back when. I kind of like that view, uh, that look better for him, honestly. This is what he's wearing now, or we can put him. Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna put him in. Nah, we're going to put him in his other colony type gear. It just makes the most sense. I mean, this is what he's wearing now. So, but yeah, he's officially joining us as a official party member. So, after all that, let me go right back in here and, um, yeah, take on all these. So, uh, I'll be right back. Uh, once I've completed each of these, and you'll see uh, the rewards I get for each of them. So, I'll see you guys back here in just a moment. Alright, I've actually tried this battle a couple of different times with a couple of different party members. And uh, nothing really seems to be working too well. So, uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, we're going to come back to this later. Obviously, like I said, we'll be coming back multiple times. Um... And when we do the restricted fights again later on as we continue the story, I'll come back and do uh, anything 
uh, in the free category that um, we have the right party level for because while the recommended level is 30, a lot of the enemies are getting up into level 35, 32, even on the second phase. And it's just not working for us. We're just not able to do enough damage or anything like that to really take advantage or anything. Uh, and it's not like the other fight where, like, our party was taken up to level 30, so it made it a little bit easier. Something like that. So, I'm going to come back for this one a little bit later. Uh, we will be doing all of them eventually. Don't worry. We'll, we'll you know, we'll get them all, um, even if we don't do it right now. My plan was to do all three of them, but if I can't, that's totally fine. We'll come back and do it later. It's no big deal. So, I'm going to meet you guys... Uh, right back outside of here, so uh, let's just uh, walk outside and uh, see what we can do. And uh, so once we get out here, obviously it'll just teleport us right back out to where we were. Don't worry about like it dropping you off somewhere random. The game remembers where you are and, of course, it drops you off. And so, real quick, I want to talk about Dunban because we haven't really got to show him off. Uh, I did add a little bit of equipment for him and stuff, so I'm going to over covering up to Jim that's really about it but um I actually want to head um over here to the tutorials and the pause menu and I actually look at Dunban for battle tactics his talent art is blossom dance and press B with E slash and strike up four times in succession talent gauge fills up when I auto attack um but this is actually a pretty good job of explaining everything my style is to avoid ta attacks but I can do a large amount of damage you won't see the young ones doing this I'm more about taking the hits than dodging them. You may want to wear light equipment so you can stay quick on your feet. Ron and I are both good at drawing aggro, but my technique is to perform attacks that cause heavy damage. Gems that increase your agility would be perfect to complement your style, Dunban. And uh, they're exactly right. So Dunban is a little bit of a tank. He's basically our second tanking character. So uh, like I said earlier, we're going to find a character that's going to be even better at tanking than Ryan. Uh, you've got him right here. His name is Dunban, of course. And, uh, yeah, he's very good uh, for different reasons, and uh, we'll be uh, seeing that a little bit later on. And as the party, uh, as we progress, Dunban will become more of the tank, and uh, we can even turn around into a little bit more of an offensive character. Uh, and you'll see how that kind of works. Uh, we'll be seeing it much later on. Because uh, more than likely throughout the entire playthrough, as we make our way through these areas, Dunban, uh, Ryan will slowly kind of morph into sort of an attacker uh, rather than a um, like a defensive character, so instead of uh, so his role will kind of change a little by little. Uh, but yeah, here you can see we we're just outside Colony Six, and you could walk up there and kind of towards it, but uh, there's no reason to. We don't really have much of anything to take care of up that way. So instead, let's just head up towards Satoral Marsh. Sorry about the cut there. There's actually a one thing. That I forgot to do. And I forgot to like. Show off Dunban's skill tree and everything. So he's got bravery. Which is the basic trait. I uh, will boost his counter attack rate. Prudence will improve his, improve his block rate. And then he has improved agility. For right now I'm going to start him on bravery. But once we unlock. Uh, this is obviously allows a medium equipment. Uh, I love how it's increased aggro when no armor is equipped. Um, that's so funny. So if he's just completely naked. He just has more aggro. Anyway. Uh, we're going to leave this on until he gets. Uh most uh his strength when his hp is at max and then we're gonna switch over to wisdom just because i like the improved agility for dunban because that's really what he's about here and um for him and i've already equipped some things apparently when did i do this i don't remember showing any of this off but um okay then anything i want to attach for any of the other party members, uh, for that man, okay, that's not really necessary. And he doesn't really have anything unlocked yet, so, yeah, nothing really too crazy or special. Um, and then arts, um, yeah, he's already got everything here, so there's nothing really too special to cover here. Other than uh, what I might do is I might... Um, move around some of the arts. By the way, you can completely reorder all of the arts. Uh, so I figured that's something I want to show off. And actually, I'll do this. Um, that's just something you can do. Don't show that off. I won't do any sort of... Actually, you know what? I will do all, some leveling up. Um, well, actually... Um, I'll leave this actually for now a little bit. I want to gain some more. Um, we didn't... Uh, upgrade gale slash and things like that uh, but i'm going to leave it at that for now so 
Yeah, um, I just completely forgot about that, so I cut ahead and I was like, oh, wait, I almost forgot. Um, but yeah, um, by the way, I also want to notice that it, uh, note that it's uh, always going to be nighttime and raining when you come out of the ether mine here. Now, granted, I changed the time, so it was day for a little bit, but now it's nighttime again. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm entering this area with as uh, much nighttime as possible. So uh, at the hour of 19, that's when I want to enter into this area because, well... Uh, you guys are going to see, but we're seasoned traveler. I think that's 100 landmarks, not 150. Uh, but if we head through here, uh, no cuts in or anything, don't worry about that. But yeah, here we are, two landmarks, Kelsher Wetland. And well, guys, let's take it all in. Welcome to a fan favorite area, and one of my favorites as well. This is Satoru Marsh. never seen anywhere like this you see this is why i've been saying you need to get out of the lab every now and then we're aiming to get inside the bionis we can get to the upper regions from there wow i've never thought about going inside the bionis the closer we get to the top the more monster trouble we're gonna run into the only things i venture this far in are the knock-on merchants and curious types like me. You really know all the fun spots, eh, Dixon? <laughs> you want to get to the top? Then this is the only way. We'll push on, no matter what. That's the spirit, Shulk. Well, all right. And also, Dixon mentioned that no harms had ever been here. It's just like... Five steps away, well, I mean, not actually, uh, from, like, Colony 6, so surely some Hom saw the glowing light coming through here at nighttime and just wandered in. There's no way no Hom's had ever been here before him. Uh, got some Oopas here. I want to show off a little bit more of Dunban. We've kind of already done that. Um, now, what a lot of people do is, um, as you'll have seen, is a lot of people will end up replacing uh, Dunban with Shulk early on. And we can reset the topple, by the way, so we can kind of basically... Top all lock enemies, by the way. And so, yeah, he, like, never attacked us at all. And I'm just kind of bullying these Upas for no reason. Uh, which, granted, he attacked me. So, I guess it's not that bad. Gutbuster. Well, still can't do anything. If somebody will get a uh, break. Topple. And there we go. So, a lot of people in this game, typically, when they get done banned, is they replace him with Ryan. And so, we have a healer and... Ooh, Frost Nebulas. Uh, yeah, definitely don't want to have Charlotte out here. These guys won't attack us until we attack something else. But if we use Ether nearby, we're going to have a level uh, level 80 uh, Nebulas coming at us. And uh, we don't want that. Um, normally, these guys only appear in rainstorms. But because it's so foggy here, we just kind of, you know. Um, and ooh, hello. So this is a wool rock. Three of them would be warm indeed. Let's just see we're going to need those for quests later. Not that it really matters too much. It's just more Upas to bully. I'll take some of them out. Why not? I don't know why I would need to... No. Just... Just... No. Stop it. Okay. There we go. I was like... I was... Uh, stuck off of the attacks. Um... Uh, but they, a lot of times will replace Ryan, so you still have a dedicated healer, a tank of some sort, uh, with Dunban, of a different kind, I guess. And then a dedicated tackle with uh, Shulk. Um, and so most people think to keep Sharla um, kind of in the party still. But um, as I've kind of demonstrated here, um, instead of Ryan or Dunban, why not have Ryan and Dunban? Um, now, I want to preface this by saying I will never tell you that Sharla is useless, um, but obviously we're not going to be seeing a lot of her uh, in the coming areas. I'm trying to still continue to use her as much as possible just because I think it's she's a good character and she can definitely use her. And I'm going to continue to fight these guys while I talk about this because um, I will never tell you that Sharla is bad because... Uh, in times where you're facing a little bit of higher level enemies and... Um, 
Like, you're facing higher level enemies. You need a dedicated healer because the fight's going to last a long time. Enemies that are high level, unique monsters, things like that. Charla is very good. She'll keep you alive. And so I will never tell you that Charla is useless. But when you're just out exploring and you're like me and you're getting to an area and you're like a little higher leveled and about the same level as all the enemies here. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have Charlotte in the party. She's not really contributing much unless maybe it's a flying enemy and you can use Thunder or Wave. But then again, even still, it's not that useful. And she's just not as useful as some of the others. Uh, chain Attack that I actually will use. Because um, we're all fairly in close proximity. Um, Gale Slash. Inflict Break. Topple. There we go. Right, so we at least toppled it. We'll do some more damage. Things like that. Um, but like I said, I'll never tell you Charlotte's useless. Um, but she's just... She's not useless, she's just, after this point, as we gain another party member, a fourth party member at least, and we can just kind of do a lot of damage really quickly and take out enemies before I can even really acknowledge their existence, to be honest. It's just, she's not that helpful anymore. So, uh, don't be afraid not to use Charlotte for a while. Though, granted, I'll definitely be using her at times, and I'll always be changing around her equipment as well, and... In this Let's Play, I'm going to try to use a bunch of different party combinations. One, because some, a lot of I haven't used before, and I'll finish this thought later. Everyone, look. It's a group of Nopon. Ah, some Nopon merchants. What do you think they're up to? They must be here for a reason. Let's go and ask them. Good idea. Sure, just a quick cutscene interrupting me, of course. Then we have some Aqua Nebulas that aren't nearly as strong around in this area. Now, I'm not using this bridge. I'm just going to keep walking. I'll continue to upgrade our equipment and do a bunch of different things like that. But, for uh, you know, I'll try to, like, maybe every episode, every couple episodes, kind of mix up the party a little bit, change out who I'm using, things like that. But, now that we're here, though, uh, there is a merchant here. Um, Charlotte, this isn't as good. I'm pretty sure we already have some of these. Oh, actually, no, we don't. I'm sorry. Uh, battle Driver for Ryan. Um, his attack goes down, but his defense goes up, and his block rate goes up. So, it can't be that bad. It only has one empty slot compared to the two that he has uh, right now. So, I'd rather keep this one uh, for him. Uh, and for Charlotte, plus this one's got three slots. So, I'd much rather than Gatto's rifle. just... The best rifle that we'll get for a long time. Um, and then finally, we have one weapon for um, Dunban, which is new. Uh, his auto attack goes, or his auto attack maximum goes way up. Um, and it also has a slot on it, I should mention. But his um, minimum attack goes down slightly, so it's actually slightly better. Um, but it is uh, a little bit better. Well, I mean, it is better than what he has now, but uh, I would recommend keeping his other weapon around because this one is not the anti mech on clay uh, or glaive or whatever it's called. So um, it won't be able to do damage to like So his sword right now does damage to mech on. This one will not, so he'll just do one damage. Um, so I'd recommend just kind of like, you know, keeping an eye on that. And the uh, pine head gear, terrain defense too. Um, reduces damage taken from the environment by 20%. Um, not that great, I don't think, I would say. Um, how much better is this than what Dunban has? Um, his defense goes down just a little bit, but I mean, we can buy this. It'll be good. It's got a slot on it. I always recommend taking armor with slots, even if the uh, uh, what it's got goes down. Um, personally, for Shulk, this raises his defense a lot, but it's... Yeah, it's just... We have them. We're not using them already. So, let's see. Pelt gloves. Uh, agility up too. Ooh, actually, um, his defense goes down a little bit more. Um, but I mean, hey, it's got a slot on it. Agility up two. I will definitely take that for. Um, what about Shulk? Is this good for Shulk too? Honestly, I'll take two of them for Shulk and. Um, 
Actually, I want to come. What does Shulk have on now? He's got agility up. Oh, he's already got agility up too. Um, so I guess it's really not that useful. Um, we'll just buy one then. Um, it's always good to compare the equipment while you've got it. Uh, pelt, leggings. Once again, defense goes down slightly. Um, should be good for Shulk. He's got unique up. Oh no, he's got the high belt with strength up too. Um, I actually keep that off. Um, hmm, actually, I have a lot of defense here for just about everybody. Um, let's see, more slots is always good. Um, chill defense four. I don't think we've seen a level four gym yet. Not really useful for us right now. Um, Yeah, we'll leave it here, and of course a bunch of things for Dumbang since we just got him. I don't mean to waste time looking through all that, but it's really important to just kind of walk you through what I'm thinking as I'm buying these. Because I want to, you know, some people don't always know. Um, there's uh, an up one here named Bococo. Um, he's got a quest for us, though I'm going to skip out on that for right now. Instead, we're going to speak to this merchant. Bad things happen at night, so scary here. Uh, and kill some detox Brog. So it's almost eaten by Brog. I want to make sure it never happens again. So these are all just the generic quest of the area uh, that I want to take care of. Satoral Grow, you can see it. You can't see in daytime, but it, you can see it at nighttime. She's got beautiful light, uh, quad wings. Just I'm not gonna read all these. Just just more generic quest. And so uh, I think there's four of these in total, and there's more we can find elsewhere. But uh, we won't be doing any of them. Um, I'm not gonna be like going out of my way to do these unless it's like on the beaten path. Um, so like, and of course I'll run out of my way to you know grab any sort of a water log. Interesting. Why can't we jump on that? It's strange. Also, Grove Quad Wing. Or Quad Wing, level 81. Luckily, they're not sight enemies. They're not going to attack us just because they can see us or else we'd be uh, in quite a lot of trouble here. Um, so, uh, we should be good there. And we should be able to jump on this, right? Surely. Okay, apparently not. Um, jumping out of the water like this makes us move just a little bit quicker. So, I would recommend doing that if you can. And, um, yeah, this area is actually really pretty, um, green ferris. Luckily, will not attack me, but goodness, what a high level. Um, just out and about, I don't remember seeing those guys just wandering around. Luckily, they're not for a quest or anything. Just a lot of higher level enemies around the area. Other than that, that's, uh, pretty much it. Um, the upas and stuff aren't needed for quests or anything. I'm going to ignore them because there's an ether deposit up here that I want to grab. Anytime you see an ether deposit, I recommend obviously going out of your way and getting it. I've obviously probably said this more than once. Um, but always, always, always be on the lookout for these things. I'm just going to run away from you if I can, if you'll allow me. Uh, the kind gesture of... Okay, maybe not. I was about to say, are you going to let me target on them at least? Oh, we're going to see Dumban's uh, art here uh, in full effect. Up to four slashes here, and I screwed it up. Sweet. Uh, okay, never mind. Shulk and Ryan took care of it for me. Also, we leveled up somewhere in there, somewhere that I wasn't paying attention to. Uh, oh, no, no, we we're always level 27. I'm confused. Dunban was always level 26. Um, and yeah, so I would recommend every time you see ether crystals or ether deposits, obviously go look and grab them because the farther we move along in the Bionis and the farther we get along in the story, the ether crystal deposits are going to have better and better rewards for us. Um, so just that's something you're going to want to look out for. All right, so all these guys are quite high leveled. Uh, nothing really else to do out here. Um, just more giant green ferrises around and... Um, Let's see, um, yeah, since we're, uh, kind of out and about around here, um, we actually have quite a ways to travel still, uh, if we happen to see, uh, any enemies on our path, kind of up towards where we're going, I guess, I'll, um, go to my way to, I guess, uh, fight some of them, I, I guess, I mean, might as well, right, um, Ignas, we're going to try to avoid. These guys are walking across this bridge here. Alright, I guess we're fighting uh, on this bridge. Ignas are just like these weird lizard looking folks, I guess. Peerless. 
Uh, so we'll take the aggro a little. Uh, but we get a lot of strength up and stuff like that. So nothing to worry about there. Break. Topper end. Shulk uses Monado Buster. I found the AI for Shulk does that quite a lot. He'll just use Monado Buster instead of like anything else that he's like probably should take care of at least. Um, so yeah, um, unless you're going to be using Shulk, I honestly sometimes wouldn't recommend him in the party. Um, though right now I'm going to use him just because I think, uh, having this party set up is great for traveling through the, uh, Satoru Marsh, at least at the moment. Um, uh, Rogel, that's a uh, a lot of strong leveled enemies here. I don't know why there's so many strong enemies here and not a lot of the weaker ones that we need for quests, though. We'll be taking care of a lot of those, uh, later on. Um, but, uh, since we're here in the marsh, um, this soundtrack is one of the favorites, uh, probably in the entire series, so, um, I like it too, so I'll let you guys listen for just a moment. I think that's enough for now. I know it was interrupted a little bit by my running around and things like that. Um, but I do want to grab that landmark. It'll be important uh, later on, I promise. Uh, let's try to avoid these Ignas if we can. I'm making sure to grab any sort of item orbs that we see along our path out here. Because obviously those are going to be quite important. For a, a multitude of quests, obviously. Uh, those are Mist Rogel. And um, you guys will see that as the daytime appears. Um... The music changes here, obviously, and the uh, nice prettiness of the area kind of starts to fade away. Yeah, this area doesn't look nearly as nice uh, in the daytime. This lamp, it has a very strange glow. It's the remnants of the Hyantia. They've hidden themselves away in the upper reaches now. But at one time, they controlled this whole area. Good for them. It's the perfect place to get some shot eye. The lamp will keep the monsters away. We'll be safe if we rest here. Ah, the breeze feels so good. It's so peaceful. You know, Shulk, I hope every day can be like this, always. You will pay for what you've done! to change it. The future. Has it been that long? Dixon. Fourteen years since I found you on that mountain. Seems like yesterday. all to you if you hadn't found me that day I wouldn't be here now discovering the world forgive me Shulk sorry I couldn't stay to poke don't be now I think about it that was when I found the Monado as well this might be crazy talk but maybe you and the Monado are part of some higher plan I don't remember much at all 
but I know that my mum and dad left me it. The Monado was their final gift to me. At least, that's how I used to think of it. That's why I want to discover its true power and help defeat the Mekon. But so far, I've just been creating piles of Mekon scrap. So you don't just want to study it in a lab after all. The sword. There must be some way 